Okay. Hi guys, my name is Bertalan Miklós and I am an engineer at Rising Stack. Uh, sorry for this screen. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is the first screen of Rising Stack, so I can promise everything will go well, but I will try my best. We have everything set up. And I will speak about front-end development today. Uh, I don't know if you read the last blog post uh, about this free API server, but one of my colleagues, his code will be his right here. So one of my colleagues just made uh, an API server. The music is too loud. Music is too loud, okay, thanks. Yeah, we are fine doing this. Uh, just feel free to write a comment if anything is kind of bad on your side. Okay, so back to the API server. Uh, so this guy here is called Robbie and he just made uh, a dockerized API server that you can start with a single command, like docker compose app. And then you can use it to develop uh, any kind of frontend for it. And I will do a small uh, React frontend for it. And I can promise I will finish it because I planned this to be like an hour long, but I will do my best and I will use my own React stack. Some of it is written by me, some of it is written by other guys that you probably know. It's like uh, Create React app and uh, Material UI. And then some of it is not yet open source actually. So, yep, yeah, I will open source that thing later too. But I still have to fine tune it. Uh, yeah, sorry for clicking around. Okay, so let's get to it. Uh, I won't need Atom now. Okay, so. Uh, to bootstrap a project, I usually use Create React App. Uh, if you don't know about it, I will just show it in a second. And also npx, if you don't know this command, I think you should get familiar with it. Uh, it's a nice replacement uh, for global npm installs. And let's call this thing uh, maybe React Dummy. Sounds cool. So what it does, it uh, uh, fetches a lot of React related uh, dependencies for me. It creates a new folder. I have some time because it's installing now. Uh, I will just show you the page for it actually, because it usually takes like a minute to install with our internet. So it's like here. Super slow. Yeah, you usually, people usually know the author of it. He's called Danny Remov. He's like uh, a very prominent React developer. Uh, so, what it does, it creates a basic React application for you with all of the Webpack config. And uh, for now, it has offline support. I, I guess they will remove it from the default config. And it also has some basic source code for some inspiration. I actually, I would like it more without any source code, but uh, that's just my preference. It works as, as it is. So you can see that it's, it's, it fetches some packages. It links together dependencies for me. And it needs a little bit more time. And after that, we can get started. But so this is like the fastest way to, to bootstrap a project. Uh, if you don't know about this, you can, like this is a, a no config project, so you should just use it as it is. But if you have issues with it, there is a command called eject. And you can just run npm run eject to basically get out all of the config from behind the scenes. And uh, yeah, it's some advanced stuff. Actually, I don't like to do it, but uh, but because of this, it's a nice start for any project. Because if if you grow out the default config, then you just eject and take it over. Yeah, we are done. 
So uh, we should have a folder called React Dummy now because Create React app just made it for us. And if you look into it, you have all these files here. And I will just open this with Atom. This is my preferred editor. And you're waiting a bit. Uh, just a second. Yeah, great. So this is what it did. It uh, installed some dependencies. Most of the dependencies are hidden behind Create React App, and it has some source code here, as you can see. Uh, let me just turn on the prettier uh, configuration. Yeah. And for the other stuff that we are going to use, uh, I think I will use these ones. So I just copy this over. Uh, most of this is Material UI uh, for React. So we will just need to npm install these things too. And after that, we are good to go. Uh, uh, I think everybody knows Lodash. Axios is a uh, networking uh, client. Uh, I found it to be the best. I think Fetch is a bit low level. And Axios is just, mm, it just works. I, I haven't found any issues with it so far. And Material UI, probably you are familiar with it. It uses the material UI from Google and combines it with React components. And this one is just uh, the Google font that material UI uses. So again, this is installing a bit, but uh, uh, yeah, it won't take more than a minute and then we can really start developing. And there is one thing that I, I didn't npm install yet. Uh, that's because it's not open source yet. It's my like private React stack. For now, some of it is open source. Uh, I call it React Easy Stack. And I didn't install it because it's not on the internet yet, so I will have to npm link it. If you are not familiar with npm link yet, it just creates. Ah, I will show it in action, actually. Uh, it just creates a sim link in your computer, so I just npm link react easy stack. It's another private package in my computer. And now we are good to go. So if I just run npm start here. Ah, why do you do this? Yeah, this is an issue with create react app. If anybody knows anything about it, just, just write me a comment. Uh, somebody, it installs the dependencies at first, but if I install anything else, it just deletes all the dependencies and I have to rerun npme. So we need some more installation, but I promise this is the last one. Uh, and in the meantime, this is what Create React App did for us. I won't write any, yeah, let's do it from the command line uh, because it's faster. Uh, so if we go to the source folder, you can see that we have a lot of files and I won't need the tests so I can remove that. I won't need the logo. I won't need, actually, I probably won't need any CSS because I will just write it in the GS, but we will see. So it's safe to remove these. And that uh, is still installing. So yeah, let's just start the code in the meantime, because why not? So yeah, if you have never seen an app with Create React App, this is how the index file look like, looks like. It's pretty standard thing, except for this here. Uh, I won't go into depth, but uh, this does the offline caching for you for the application shell. Not it doesn't cache your data, but it does cache your like HTML ways of the application. And we have to get here. And I will create a not bar component to start with. And let's import it here. Yeah, this pi is not even existent anymore. So let's just and instead of all this, we should, uh, yeah, this is some 
cool stuff again. Uh, if you have no reason to put your uh, code in a div or any valid like HTML element, you should use fragment. It's a virtual element, so it doesn't pull you the DOM with actual elements. I don't know if this makes sense. And uh, let's just. Uh, that was an addition at, uh, from React 16.0. And let's just include an upper here. And here we will have some content. Uh, uh, yeah, and we should head over to the navbar. Let me just copy this. Okay. Navbar. Uh, Cool. And also, this should be in a fragment for now. Uh, yeah, that's prettier. Uh, all of this jumping around is done by prettier. It's an auto formatter. Sometimes it's annoying. I should configure it to be better. Uh, but it's a cool tool. So if we check uh, uh, our app now, it installed everything. We just have to link our local dependency. It's called React Easy stack, it handles state management and routing and all kind of stuff. And if everything is okay now, I can just npm start. And we should mm -hmm. uh, I'm waiting for it. Yeah. Okay, let's just start it here. And something is still missing, but we will just figure it out. Nothing was returned. App. Uh, I have the chance. here, but I'm probably missing something. Uh, let's just replace this one with a diff for now. Uh, oh, it's an off bar. Yeah. Yeah, this one was a pretty bad mistake. Uh, yes, this is fragment. Uh, so it complained because this is not an empty div. Empty div would be acceptable here. So if I do this, the whole thing will just work fine. Yeah, you can see it's an empty navbar and some content, but because I use fragments, it's a vir virtual DOM element. So actually the render returned nothing and apparently React is complaining about that thing. Uh, so let's go on with the uh, navbar. Graphic starts, create with npm i. Yeah, I just saw your comments. Uh, that could work, the npm i thing. Actually, I, I really should file an issue to create React Up because it worked fine for me for like a long, long time, and uh, for the last week it does this. And I have no idea. Probably it's some local thing because I have never seen anybody with this issue before. Uh, so, we will just create uh, some components for our navbar. Uh, so, we are using material UI and we need the navbar. Then, we will also need. Uh, I hope it's called like this. I will just have to cheat a bit. Material UI. Yeah, it's called a toolbar. And here we are just, uh, yeah, doing an upbar. Uh, 
that's super annoying. I might just turn this off. On this side here, let's make a toolbar. Okay, and let's see what we have. Okay, so we have a completely empty app bar now. Uh, that's a start, and uh, I forget to tell you what we are doing actually. Uh, so this is the post that I started with. If you were not here, one of my colleagues made an API server to just play around with, to learn front-end technologies. And you can find uh, the documentation here. And it has basic authentication, so we will do that. It's like login, register, log out. Uh, and it has a list of products, basically. Uh, it's pretty cool because you can progressively create applications to it because half of the API is public. Like you can list all of the products publicly, but you can only edit or delete products if you have if you have logged in. So first we are making a little search application for the public products. So this is why we need this app bar. We are just going to uh, put a search bar into it. Search bar from Material UI search bar, and we will need uh, yeah. I had Prettier disabled for a very long time. Now I enable, enabled it, and it's strange for now. Yep, yeah. and I just have to uh, UI. Search bar. Yeah, I just have to check the API for the search bar because I, I am not totally familiar with it. So I think we will use these things. Yeah. So let's add the search bar. Uh, we won't even need an on change. Okay. And if you check the app now. Yeah, it has a little search bar now here. Mm. <laughs> Hi, Andrish. Uh, one of my colleagues just dropped the comment. Uh, he's a pretty cool guy. Follow him on Twitter. He's called Tolt Andrish. Uh, yeah, so let's get back to the application. Uh, we have a little search bar now. I don't really like the style of it, so I will just write all of the style uh, in just plain objects in JS because for small apps I think it's fine. So let's just create, let's call it uh, search style creatively. And uh, not, not even a search style, sorry, it should be a toolbar style. And I don't like that it is very wide, so let's just give it a maximum width, it should be 800. And uh, I always mess this up, but I think it should be zero auto. Uh, we will see it in a second. Uh, I never know which one is the x dimension and the y dimension. Uh, and I always mess this up, so it's just a uh, try and see kind of approach now. Uh, yeah. That seems to work. Either toolbar style, max width, 800 margin, out of zero. Hey, it was a second now. Okay, it's not perfect, but uh, we will just make this one better over time. So let's add some functionality, and this is where uh, my private stuff comes in. Uh, so we will need a few things from uh, React Easy Stack. 
Uh, first, we are going to need params. React is a stack, and we are also going to need view. View makes components reactive. It's uh, part of the state management thing. And uh, this own request search. Uh, <laughs> I'm just checking the comments. Uh, it should be like this dot on request, on request, on search maybe. Yay, cool. And I prefer to use arrow functions instead of binding my methods, but it's just me again, prettier. Jesus. Uh, and what I want to do here is uh, I want to. Do params that search equals filter. Yeah, it should be better now. And let's just search for something. You will see why I do this. And if you check the the URL parameters now, if I just I don't know, search for something else, it's just out to update. Uh, there is no big magic here. It uses ES6 proxies in the background. And I like to do this because uh, I think that uh, the, the primitives that uh, like define the current states, they should be reflected in the, in the URL because, uh, yeah, let's change one more thing and I will, I will show you why. Uh, so what we are need, uh, we also going to need we just let's make this into a control component. And if you check it now, yeah, that's it. So I just do, I don't know, meet here. And if I want to share this thing, it should be shareable by a URL. So if I just give it to someone else and they open it, it should open the application in the exact state that you passed it. And this can be a pain. So, but it's important. And this params object here, I forget the most important part, it auto-synchronizes with, uh, with the parameters. So you can forget about all this synchronization by hand, you can just use that params. Okay, so we have this thing ready. And, uh, ah, sorry about the mic, mic. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is the first stream, so we didn't want to invest a lot into this, but if this plays out well, we will just uh, do a small studio here with a better mi microphone and these kind of things. Uh, I will. And why should I try to put it somewhere else? Okay. Uh, yeah, so we have this uh, synchronization thing and uh, Let's create a store. So we will need to store things somewhere. And this one also uses the, the stack that I, I have. I will open source it in a few weeks, hopefully. Uh, so let's just create an application store. It should be a store. And let's, uh, let's export it. And uh, it should have an async search method uh, that searches for, uh, uh, for some data. And then we will need another file. Let's call it the API. And this is where the networking will happen. So I like to structure my apps in this way, where you have three layers. Uh, there is like the component layer, the store layer, and the networking layer. And ideally, I should remove every event-related stuff and props and these kind of things here. And in the, the application state management layer, I usually just play around with, stay, with like totally plain JavaScript with low dash at maximum. So 
it makes it very like it makes it easy to replace the framework later and then the API layer is useful to uh, you will see in a second it's useful to handle headers and authorization and networking and timeouts and these kind of things so as I said we are going to use a library called Axios uh, oh this is something totally different and I just have to I don't know it by heart but it's cool uh, I have to create an instance yeah creating an instance this is what I will use so import axios from axios and let's call this API timeout I don't need any timeout now I don't need any headers now and uh, Ruby's API has a hosted version so we are going to use this one for, for the demonstration and now we have this API and I can just do like, I can export a function that is called search and takes a filter and cause await api.get uh, let's check the documentation quickly so we want to search products uh, yeah so we need this thing here so we are searching the the product endpoint pro Ducts. and uh, we need a query parameter params yeah it's called params so we need a query parameter where search is the best filter uh, so far so good I don't see any issues here so if we get to the app store we can just import and let's just namespace it as uh, API and API not PI API and here uh, we just uh, await API dot search theater okay and in the API I actually have literally no idea that this uh, let's check what this returns uh, so this one returns an array of products uh, cool so let's just we don't need any headers and other kind of thing so let's just distract the data from here and uh, return data.products we only need the array if you check it here it returns an object with a single array so this should work uh, and in the app store this one this dot products equals and let's just give this a default value of an empty array it's not required but it's nice it's kind of it documents uh, the intention and uh, this one is important uh, I never use this in size store methods because this is a single object and uh, it's a singleton so this doesn't make any sense here you can't have multiple instances of this so you can just use a simple simple closure here so instead of this you can use the app store directly and what this does is uh, it allows you to uh, pass the methods here as callbacks without any binding or any other stuff like that you can only do this with objects you cannot do this with uh, classes but it's a cool little trick uh, yeah so I have this search now and if I get back to the navbar component I want 
start. Yeah, I should just f store dot search filter. It doesn't mean like here I am not using it as a callback, but it's it's safer to do it uh, this way instead of this in case you ever want to pass it as a callback. Okay. Cool. And in the F store, I just want to console load app store dot products after the search. I bet this one won't work, but we will see. App store is not defined. Cool. That's not a big issue. So let's just import app store from app store. Probably we will have some other issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was not an async function. It happens. Ah, if you saw it for a second, pretty or didn't work there. And that was because I had a syntax mistake. And it just styled it in a second. So if I search for meat, it searches, it returns an empty array. If I search for rustic, Yes, we have the data here. Perfect. Uh, so let's go on. We have to display those products that we have. So uh, it's getting together now. So we are going to need another component. Let's just call it uh, uh, product list JSX. And I'm also going to copy the app here. Uh, okay, let's call this again product list. We'll need an app bar here. Uh, I will need a few things. I will need a view probably. Uh, React easy stack. And let's view product list. And I will need the app store from app store again. Epic. Uh, and here I just have to app store dot product dot map yeah I forgot something and I have a product and for now let's just do this to see if everything works correctly product dot name I just have to check if we will also need a key product dot id and in the app Below the app bar, we will need the product list. Import product list from product list. So we need the product list here. And just to check it, yeah, the products have an ID and a name, so what we did was okay. So if I search for Rustic here, it does absolutely nothing. I search for meat, nothing. We have a mistake somewhere, so I will just have to check that. Uh, App Store, Amazon, App Store, Product. So uh, in the product list, mm, yeah. This is an issue again. Fragments. It's perfect. There are so I I misuse fragments so perfectly that you can learn a lot from this. Here I had an array inside of fragments, and I think that caused an issue. Maybe not. We will see. No, that was not it. Uh, we will see it in a second. Let's just console 
this one and store that product. Uh, yeah, sorry about this. Something just went wrong, but uh, maybe resolve it in a second. something inside the return. Actually, rendered out everything correctly, but uh, our application style it just rendered things below the header, so we will need to uh, pro that uh, maybe app style maybe add the app style const app. And it should have a margin top for now, at least uh, 80 probably. And if you check it now, have some, some issues with uh, yeah of course I have some issues if I try to do something silly I, I messed up the styling here. Uh, first, I rendered stuff behind the application bar, and then I tried to apply a style to a non non native DOM element. So I tried to apply a style to like a basic uh, React component, and of course it doesn't work there because I, I don't handle the style props in the other uh, in my component. Now it works. Uh, okay, so what happens here is um, actually multiple things happen already. So if you search for something, uh, it actually propagates to the query parameters and it searches for data, it fetches data from the API server and it displays the data here. 
Uh, we should make it a bit nicer now and add a little bit of extra awesomeness. So first we are going to need a product component to display that uh, uh, to display the product. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this again. Uh, we won't need it here. Just have to focus a bit more. Yes. So let's just copy this thing and make a new file. Let's call this product. JSX. Uh, I won't need this. We we'll need uh, view. Yeah, we have a product. And inside the product, we will need a card and card content. Probably. I will have to check it from material UI slash. Card. I'm just doing a quick check here. Material UI next. Yes, uh, this is a component library, Material UI for React, and it has a super awesome documentation. So I can only recommend it to to build your applications. So if you check this card here, you can see that uh, it has a card and it has a card content and that's it. So actually I didn't mess it up. Uh, so we are going to need a card here and inside that card we will need uh, let's see what we will need card content we will need a card content And inside the card content, I will just use, uh, and this is not the nicest thing to do, but I will just use a simple A3 tag. And uh, so if you check it here, we are passing down the deal, that's down, uh, the product to this. Component product dot ID. You will see it in a second. So we are passing down the product as a property to this component. Uh, perfect. And here we have the product. And if you check the the little API server, you see that it has a name, a description, a price, and a currency. That should be enough for us now. Available ingredients. Maybe we will add that later. So for now, we only need like. A name and a description. Uh, yeah, so just let's distract it from the props. Perfect, and here we will just display the name and we will just add the paragraph and display the description here. Yes, it won't work for now, probably, but we will just. I fix it because I did a lot of code that I'm testing. Yes, we have a lot of empty cards uh, because we have it on the products. Yeah, I am not going to use. If this was a serious application, I would just import prop types uh, from the uh, prop prop types package and make products uh, required, but uh, that's just what I play that I don't want. I don't want to bore you with that. So yeah, we have a bunch of cards, and if I search for something else, it searches, it really does search the internet. So that's a start. Uh, first, we are going to format the cards, and after that, we will just clean up a few things that uh, should be a bit different, but uh, we are getting somewhere now. Uh, yes, uh, so to sum things up, uh, this will be like a 
product listing UI. It's a UI for this freebie server here. This is a server made by Robbie, my colleague. Uh, the last article in the blog is about this server. You can just start it with a single command. And really the purpose of this server is to, is to build dummy UIs for it. So I am doing that. Uh, I built a dummy UI for this server in React. And uh, you can find the documentation here. It's uh, hopefully I'm not wrong. I think it's a, a server for uh, products, and products are kind of uh, groceries here or foods. So for now, I am not concerned with uh, login and registration. I am just doing a simple UI for the public part of the API, and that's. Uh, and mainly that's, that's about searching uh, food uh, with keywords. So you can see it finds food, drastic. Yes, the names here, they are super awesome. Uh, if you don't know Faker, you should check it out. It generates these kind of things for you. Uh, yeah, so let's go on. For the cards, we are also using some styling. Uh, let's name this product style. I think that we should use a bit of 350 at first and then uh, yeah, just to be safe. Uh, no screen is narrower than 350 I think but uh, this one is a nice safeguard in case it happens. Uh, because this one we are just, uh, you know, MaxBit has a, has a higher priority than Bit, so it will just uh, limit it. Uh, okay, cool. And we also want to lay out those cards correctly, uh, because if you check it now, just let me show you, I can, you know, just imagine it so kind of easier for me. Uh, fresh. I forget to apply this time. Uh, let's get back to product. So style should be card. Style uh, product. Okay. Yeah, do it. Okay, you're searching for fresh again. Yeah. It has a lot of issues. Uh, the first one is that these are uh, display display blocks. But if you just do uh, display inline block, it will still be a bit messed up. Uh, let me show you. Uh, I should have used hot reload. Yeah, you can see there. Yeah, apart from not having a margin, I will fix it soon. You can see that the cards are adapting to the content. So one is smaller, one is bigger. Uh, we don't want to do that. So instead of doing this, we will just uh, do a flexbox because it's super powerful. So let's just make a list style. It should be uh, flex box display huh? I'm actually wow I forgot how to write flexbox yeah this happens flexbox ah, okay so it should be a flexbox and it should align items uh, Space between, and it should. Yeah, this is the magic justify content uh, stretch. Uh, yeah, and if I just apply this style, this style, and it should look much better. Basic concept. That's one. 
things. I don't have auto completion from CSS because I didn't set it up for JS in CSS in JS. So I am actually struggling with this. You know what? Let's just do it here. So let's make it dummy display flags box. Yes, then line items. That should be stretch and justify content should be space between and flex prep should be prep. Uh, yeah, sorry for the long styling. It will be over in a second. Uh, I usually write my style in CSS, just I wanted to, to make this one simple. So I, I, I will put my style here. Let me just copy that thing here and then reformat it. So it should be a flex box. Uh, align items should be stretch. It should be space between justify content. Next wrap should be wrap. And I'm just in need of a couple of commas. Now it should be better. like this, still not perfect, but uh, it's getting there. That was some long, long styling intermezzo. Uh, okay, and instead of space between, this should be space around. Just look at the, yeah, look at this down here. So let's make this space around, and then let's go to the product. Let's just give them a little margin, maybe 20. And at the application, we have the app style. This one should probably have a max width of around 800 and a margin of, instead of this, it should have a margin of uh, maybe 80 and auto. Sequence. I again mess up the X and Y margin with the, the shorthand syntax. Uh, no, that was not it. Should be better now. Yes, and yeah, looks pretty cool. And if you check it on mobile, it's also kind of nice. So we are done with this. I will just have to play around with the number, but uh, it was enough styling for now. So we are going to do something more exciting. Uh, we should do a loader. So, for small apps like this, uh, yes, about loading, just a little primer. Uh, so there are many ways to handle loading. Uh, what I usually don't like is uh, when people uh, just erase everything from the screen and they put a loader uh, on the screen 
and then there is a loader for some time, and then they put out the new content because uh, it looks dirty for for small connection. It's just you know it's just a flash of it's just an unnecessary flash uh, for fast connections, and for slow connections, it just uh, you don't see any data for a very long time. So what I like to do is to keep the old content and put some kind of loader anywhere, probably at the top of the application or somewhere that indicates that uh, just hang on, I'm loading stuff. So we are going to do that and we will handle it globally. We will do an API interceptor for AXS. Uh, let's just copy this code here. So we are intercepting our API. Uh, we won't handle errors for now. So this, this one won't be robust, but uh, it will work. So what we need to do is we have to intercept API calls. And here we have to save a flag uh, is low. in the App Store that indicates if the application is loading or not. True, and here uh, this will be a big fat to do because it has a lot of issues. First, it should do uh, the same thing on errors. And also this, like this thing here, it should be a counter because if I have multiple parallel requests, then the boolean is not enough to do the job. Uh, replace this. So, to be robust, this should be a counter that indicates how many requests I have pending. And if I have zero, it means that I'm not loading anything. Uh, let's just import the App Store, not the App Stein, the App Store uh, from the App, App Store. Ooh, we are setting the loading flag here, and if we get back to the navbar, uh, we will need some kind of indication. And, uh, so we need a progress bar. And yep, this is my favorite here. I have used it before, so I know what I'm doing. So we will just use a linear progress bar. Uh, with the secondary color. Uh, so in the nav bar, right below the add bar, let's just put this one in a fragment. Uh, yes, and here, if the app store is loading, we should just uh, display uh, Linear linear progress, and it should have a secondary color. Okay, and if everything went well, uh, yes, again, it's not hot reloading for now. Yeah, debugging time. So, in the API, this is the issue. So this might be the first issue. Return response is loading true, is loading false. App Store. Let's just console log. App Store is loading here. And yeah, we should also check the log that helps. True or false? Mm. Yeah, so I have some other phones on that. True or false? It should work. I think I know the issue. 
store. We don't want to load this thing here. Yes, and let's get back to this. And uh, we should just uh, throttle the internet connection, something slower. Uh, Rustic. Still not visible. That's not good at all. Some why the loader is not displaying for us, but it's not with the state management. Uh, something else is bad. As you can see, it's still not there, but it should be there. Uh, I will just check if it's in the DOM. Actually, let's just use the React one. Uh, this is the official React DevTools. You're probably familiar with this. So there is a linear progress bar. But it's at the wrong place. So it should be inside the app bar, I guess. Uh, again, it was the same issue that I did earlier. The progress bar was actually lost behind the application bar, so you couldn't see it. But it's going to be better now, hopefully. I still can't see it. Secondary. Okay. We are debugging it. It's, it should take just a little bit more. Some paper components. It's there now. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know what's the issue here, but uh, let's just quick fix it. So, progress style should have a margin top of maybe uh, five. And it should have the progress style. Uh, and now everything works out. Still not there. That's pretty bad. I will just leave it and go on if it doesn't work out now. Linear progress bar. Yes. So let's get back to the elements. And uh, let's see the header. And uh, the progress. Maybe set this to 20. Oh. I mess it up again. Uh, so it should have a color secondary. it later because I'm totally lost right now uh, but uh, loading is an important part so we will get back uh, I just need five minutes rest five minutes of rest to do something else and then we can get back to this and uh, debug it because something is definitely bad here but I can't seem to find but so we have we can search now we can display the cars that we have uh, but, uh, we should also uh, 
search for the first time that the application was emitted, uh, initialized. So we should just do an f store dot search uh, parents dot filter here. Uh, so this just takes the filter query parameter and searches based on that uh, parameter. It's actually called params of search. Right, easy stack. And we should add some routing because that's a lot more exciting than debugging some styling issues. Uh, so if you check it now, yeah, so if I just search for fresh and I want to share some fresh stuff with my workmates, I can just give them the link and it works. Uh, okay, so now that this is ready, we are ready to go on with routing and adding authentication. I think I will continue for like another half an hour and then I will call it a day and then maybe we can continue it next week. Uh, so let's get back to the application and uh, I will need a few routing related stuff from my React stack. I will need a router probably and I guess that's all for now. Easy. Stack. Also view. View is necessary for state management and if you use this this stack here, you should wrap every component with you. It just make it uh, it's simpler. So let's replace this with a router. And uh, this one should be the products page. And we will also need a login page. And the default page should be the products page. And uh, this one should be called login. And we will need a login component to make this work. From dot login. Uh, so again, I will just copy this whole thing because that's the easiest. New file, let's make a login.jsx. Let's copy this. Okay. We have a login component, uh, which should probably have a single div with login, single paragraph for now. It's just a dummy placeholder. And we won't need these things, we won't even need the navbar, we won't need the router, we, need, we might need the fragment later. Okay, and the last thing is some navigation for this. So we are going to need the button from material UI slash button. And we will also need a link from my stack. So we have to place a button about login here and we will need a link here. It should point to the login page. And it should be called login. Okay, we will see if it works or not. Probably it won't work for the first time. But, uh, hopefully, I didn't mess up anything. So, yeah, it works. Cool. So now we have two pages we have a products page, and we have And we have a login page. And the default page should be the products page, yeah. Uh, okay, 
So one thing about this login, it should uh, should have a correct color. So I would just inherit the white one from the repo team. And uh, uh, we also need some additional logic here at the navbar. Uh, in the search, I actually want to go back to the other page. So this one, this, this will be some navigation without a link. This will be navigation with uh, the function, like programmatic navigation. So I will just use the global root function here. That will just tell it to Yeah, let, let me do it without an async function first. So I will just tell it to go to products. And this will have several issues. So if I uh, and just a second, something is wrong with the button. I have to check it. I measure something with the colors. Uh, so we will need a button demo. Or should be inherit. Uh, or yeah, I have no idea about the button, but we will do the signing later because it's not so exciting. So if I go to the login page and then I search for something, it goes back to the products page, but it doesn't uh, keep the query parameter, the branch query parameter now. So for that, we have two options. You know, by default, this is kind of the default of all of the routers that I know, that if you go to another page, it doesn't inherit the parameters from the other page. You have to tell it in an options object. So I could just tell it in a third parameter, which is options, but I will just uh, I will just pass it as a parameter. These are the, the parameters that I passed. I will just pass it as a parameter, and then it should work. And the other issue with it was that uh, uh, yeah, let me show it. It didn't wait. You couldn't see it because it was a very quick uh, request. But if I just do press here. Uh, it uh, it did the routing before the data was fetched, uh, and that's uh, that's something I, I I don't like. It has this little flash, uh, so it's better to wait for the data to be fetched and then do the routing. So now it should be perfect. Now we have a login page. We can go to the login page, and whenever someone searches for something, it's just. Uh, just goes back to the other page and displays the results. Uh, yeah, it had that little flash, so it was not correctly waiting for this. App Store, async search, App Store, the products. To check it again. Yeah, now it works correctly. So it waited, it didn't flash anything, and when it finally fetched the data, it just came back here. So we have two screens, and we have some kind of navigation. Half is programmatic, half is violating uh, between the two screens. Now let's get back to that uh, progress bar, because it really annoys me, and I, I would like to get it done before we go with the login, because uh, that will be some more advanced thing. Uh, so let's see this navbar. Uh, it's a button here, it has a toolbar here. Maybe if I put it inside the toolbar. This is some trial by error thing. I have no idea what I'm using. Okay. So 
So for the newcomers, we are debugging an issue with uh, a visual issue with the progress bar. I just want to indicate that uh, networking is going on and hold on. Uh, things will get better. And this one is the app bar, and inside the app bar we have a paper, we have a toolbar, and inside the toolbar we have the linear progress bar. This is definitely not how it should be, so we are going to remove this. Let's put it here, and let's give it a style, progress, style. Uh, not for a second more. Okay, not bar. Inside we have an out bar. And it's here uh, So we have this little application. Inside we have an out bar. Inside that we have an out bar. And inside the out bar we should have. loader actually I mean the progress bar it's right at the bottom of it so if I just uh, go back to the elements and give this a Z index of no, 1000 0 the color of red and the background background color red okay so the issue is with the colors uh, I may have found the bug in uh, the next version of Material UI it's totally acceptable, it's in beta so there is no issue with that but I really want to use the secondary color of this thing here. So if you change uh, the progress, then this progress bar, uh, let me know if I am missing something. But uh, this progress bar, it should have this uh, color property. This here should make it red, because the issue is that it's uh, purple right now, and the primary color is also purple, so it's just not visible. Uh, it's there, it's loading, but it's not visible. It seems like it doesn't pick up the... Uh, the color property correctly, so let, let me try primary. Maybe this one helps. Yeah, it helps. So secondary color is buggy. That's good to know. Hmm, we will work around this. Uh, so now it shouldn't load indefinitely. We have an app store is loading. Display the loader if the app store is loading. If you check back here, it should refresh now. Okay, and then if I'm searching for something else, it displays the loader. It just talks. If I go to the login and I again search for something else, it loads and then it just uh, displays the new data. So I think the UI is getting better now. And uh, this is probably where we are going to stop. I will just do a little bit of maintenance and then uh, I will put it on the internet. You can play around with it. And after that, I will call it today and. Uh, let's continue it next week with authentication and some more routing and more styling and these kind of things. So, uh, let's just uh, 
fix the toolbar, it should be uh, a display flex probably again and it should also have uh, let me just copy it from here space between and just to make it look cool it should have a space between uh, justify content Just npm install the material UI next version again. Maybe I downloaded uh, uh, an older version of it, and uh, that version had some issues with the colors because it seems like uh, all of the colors are a little bit messed up. Uh, so we will see. Hopefully, it solves the color issues. Because there was a color issue with the login button and also the, um, you know, the search, the progress bar. So these are like the final touches. Flex, wrap, space around. This should be a secondary. Maybe see if it works now. It's a big, big package. We have to wait a little bit. Uh, yes. There is pretty much. Yeah, in the meantime, I will just set up the deployment for this. So I like to put dummy projects on the internet with something called now. And for that, we will add a now start command. And also, uh, like, and now, and now, field here, and we will make, give it an alliance of uh, uh, how to call it uh, npm link. I just did an npm install, so I have to link my local dependencies again. And then npm start. Hopefully the color things will be solved now. Mm. Mm, it's still compiling. Generate concrete salon? Yeah, that's we have a winner. <laughs> Uh, let's just do that. So this one will be generic concrete salad. Faker is amazing. So this is going to be the name of our little service. And with the now start script, we also need a deploy script, which should uh, do now and now. Yes, I will explain all of these a bit later. And the now start script should uh, yeah, I need a GitHub serve or npm serve. I need a, a little server. For this front end app, mm, now serve single. I didn't really prepare for serving this, so I just have to check if it. Okay, cool. Uh, so we will need serve uh, 
beard singer. This will just uh, fire app npm e serve. Okay. Uh, so uh, we are going to deploy the whole application to the internet, and I am using a tool by Site or Site. I don't know how to say it. Probably Site. Uh, and it's called now, and it's a super simple hosting service. Uh, basically, it runs npm build and npm start uh, if, if it finds a package JSON. But I want to customize start, uh, start script because this one is for development. So I just override it with now start. Uh, so it will just uh, build our application. After that, it will serve the build folder as a single page application. So it will let it uh, root on the client side. And after that, I will give it an IS of this perfect name. Thanks for the suggestion. Uh, so you can find it by this URL on the internet after we are done, hopefully in five minutes. If service is installing, installing. So the internet is super slow some way. Uh, and yeah, just to sum it up, uh, we actually made a small application with three layers. Uh, this one is the API layer. We just made, uh, I, I used Axios, and uh, we just made uh, an Axios instance with the base where we could add base headers, and we will add the token here also uh, in the next session. We have two interceptors. Uh, they are used to toggle the loading flag, so when there is some networking going on, uh, these are just toggling the, the loading flag. These are not perfect, but they work for now. And for now, we have a single endpoint which searches the products API endpoint uh, with the filter. And the other layer of the application is this store layer here. It's just plain JavaScript. Uh, it has some products and it calls the API layer with the filter to, to search and to search for products and save it. Uh, and then we have the final layer, it's the component layer. Uh, we do the routing here, we proxy events to the uh, store layer, uh, we synchronize with the query parameters here and all kind of things like that. We do the styling here. So this is, for this application at least, this is where the heavy lifting happens. And we have server installed now. So npm link react easy stack. And we just have to npm run build. Uh, I'm just checking it locally if it works. It should be ready in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah, waiting for script is not a very fun thing. Probably in the meantime, I will just go on and do an npm start to and fix a few stuff. Because this will be it for some time and then it has to serve, it has to put it on the internet. And this one is also super slow now. I don't know why the other is going on. And it's finally loading. Let's check the build. The build script. Still making the build. Epic. Let's just close a few things, maybe the tabs. Uh, yeah, probably the streaming and the music and all kind of things, they are not, not the best for this computer. Next time I will just close everything before I start. Literally everything. Because it is getting super slow now. Still creating the production beer. I can't even demo anything because I don't have the. Ah! Perfect! Uh, so we have. The production build, and we can just check it with. Uh, let's just make one more script before we put it on the internet. 
let's call it serve and let's run serve build single and now we can just run npm run serve and this will run the, the production build for us not this uh, development build and again it's Yes, perfect, finally. I can check it. Uh, I'm going to check the local one. So, I just check it here. Should work. Apparently, it does not. Unexpected token. It's perfect. Uh huh. We are npm run build again for one last time. Uh, okay, so in the meantime, actually, the development uh, server is running for us. So we can just play around with the application a bit more. Uh, probably in the toolbar, it has a max bit, it has a margin. Probably I should style the toolbar a little bit. Probably I should play around with this button, which should inherit this color instead. Should also check the toolbar here. But, uh, I'm only doing this because it's still loading, like building. Uh, and yeah, uh, just to make it nicer, it should have a bit of 100%, but it is capped by the next bit. So if you check it now, it should look a lot, a lot nicer. So it should look like a normal application after this refresh. Because uh, it was a little strange that everything was in the middle. Yeah, now it's it's a bit better. I just have to fix this button styling here because it's amazingly shady. Has this loader, perfect. There are secondary. And again, for the button color, it should be a secondary. Why not? Okay, and if we check the build process, it works now. So npm run serve, it finished building. Mm, let's check this one in the local network again. Please work. Yeah, so something was bad with the, the build process. Uh, so if I do fresh, okay, it works. Perfect. Okay, so this is the final build version. Uh, it's not very pretty, but I will just uh, leave with this. You can just click here, you can go back. Uh, and now we are going to deploy it on the internet. So, as you can see, I made these little scripts. I will just run npm deploy, and while it is doing it, I will just uh, explain what's going on. Oh, npm run deploy. Okay, so it is running now in the what deploy is found. What's up here? React dummy. Oh, yeah, it's working now. Uh, so 
it creates a URL for this application and I can just go there and see what's happening there. And this one is an immutable instance of this service. So after this, I can just either delete it or leave it there. I will just leave it there for you guys to, uh, to play around with. I see some build errors, which is not very nice, but we will see if it works out. So basically what it should do, it should just uh, put the whole thing on the internet, it should find the packages on file, it should run the build script, it should run the start script, and it should create an alliance uh, for it. And then it should be accessible by kind of this URL, it's uh, a special post fix. But it seems like we have some issues. I will try to make my computer faster for the next session because the first part was fine in my opinion, but uh, for the second part, I have to wait a lot for things to happen. And I just don't want to continue developing now because uh, I think it's over. Okay, just so I will just do a little recap uh, while it is deploying it. So if you didn't read the latest blog article on Rising Stack, just, uh, it's awesome. I suggest you to do it. It gives you a little API server that you can start with a single command, it's Docker Compose app, uh, this one right here. Uh, and I am I basically built a small application for the API server. For now, I use and you only use the public endpoints. So. Actually, I only use one endpoint. I use the searching endpoint for it. But I try to put a lot of best practices into this very simple application. It searches for uh, stuff. It uh, saves the actual, it saves the only primitive parameter that defines the current uh, state in the query parameter. So if you just open it in a new page, it's shareable, it goes back to the exact same state because this one is here. Uh, it has a very simple routine, you can go to a login page and if you just search, search for something else, it goes back to the other page. And in the next session we are going to do some authentication and more routing. Uh, and I will just fix a few styling issues outside of streaming probably because that's not very exciting. It's hopefully so. Yeah, okay, let's go it today. Uh, I really wanted to show you how to put this quickly on the internet, but I guess uh, we will have to save that for the next time too, because uh, something is super slow, it seems like something is stuck on my computer. So, see you next time, it probably will be next week. We will, we will see how it goes, and I plan to finish this application and just put it on the internet. So, see you next time.